afternoon everyone, live from Galveston, here on day two of the Gulf Coast Hurricane Awareness Tour, and we're in the middle of National Hurricane Preparedness Week. I think you recognize the gentleman standing next to me. Uh, he's my predecessor, Bill Reed, uh, the director of the Hurricane Center, uh, up until four years ago. That's how long I've been in the top building. Right. It's amazing how fast four years go by. Uh, yes, especially when you play a lot of golf. on getting the public ready for the next hurricane. How exciting is it to be not only doing the hurricane awareness tour like we have in the past years, but bringing two planes and with the Federal Alliance for Safe Homes with this Hurricane Storm Initiative, really changing the message in a positive way for the public. Oh, absolutely. It can really uh, uh, fills out the, uh, the need to tell people well, exactly what is it they're supposed to do. And a lot of people, they, the very ba basic fact of focus is on insurance and I think uh, it's becoming a real problem down here in Galveston and the, the cost of insurance is getting to be actually a demotivator for people to have insurance in some of the properties. Which what we tell people is not only are you vulnerable to storm surge in southeast Texas in many locations but if it could bring you to the flood, inland flooding is a reason to be thinking today about updating your insurance and making sure you get the flood insurance not one just a month ago, uh, northwest side of Houston into downtown, and then up Memorial Day on another one of the Bayou systems in Houston, both of which were uh, the worst ones that had happened since the dead, uh, dre dreadful flooding that we had during Tropical Storm Alice. And so what we, we really have changed up the messaging for Hurricane Preparedness Week this year. As you were mentioning, yesterday we focused on evacuation planning. Today it's about updating your insurance. Inside the I blog on the National Hurricane Center official blog, I'm writing an article about what's in my supply kit. And then uh, later this week, Leslie, uh, the president and CEO of Flash, she's writing an article for us on how to strengthen your home. And so, you know, in past years, we talk about storm surge one day and tornadoes the next day and so forth. And we're still talking about those things, but we changed up the messaging to make it more actionable for people. And we talk about what Flash is doing and what, how the Hurricane Strong Initiative has taken that to a new level. The vehicle that Flash uses is through many partnerships is to get information out in, in, in various formats and to partner with the, the folks at NOAA, the folks at FEMA and elsewhere and actually carry these programs forward. And, you know, and we work very hard at coming up with doing this in a language that's easy to understand. We use people that are professionals in messaging to get it right for us. And it's a very good way to, to teach people what it is. And we've already seen the social media traffic lighting up with the Hurricane Strong hashtag on Twitter. So follow that as the week goes on and even beyond this week because our partners, our Weather Ready Nation ambassadors, a lot of Flash partners are really galvanizing around this. And so are families and kids. Uh, we did this elementary school Ike, there's been just under a million people moved to this area. That's in eight years. So that's a million people that have not, ex maybe not experienced a hurricane. They certainly didn't experience Ike if they didn't live here. And so you have the, that issue there. And we're, we're starting to talk the hurricane amnesia, that where it's been so long now since Ike that people have figured it. We got other things to deal with. We can put on the back burner worrying about the hurricane issue. Change in evacuation rates. Added growth. We know that the evacuations, as difficult as they are, are getting progressively harder and therefore longer to accomplish. And that's one of the bigger challenges. And with on the order of a million new residents in the area since Hurricane Ike in 2008, I think a lot of people might be getting overwhelmed with all the hurricane preparedness talk. Where do I start? Uh, does it resonate with you if we tell people to start finding out if you live in an evacuation zone? Get your Everybody gets a piece of mail come to them in 
your mailbox sometime along the way, and it has that five-digit number that's the zip code. And what we're telling people here today is if you do live in an evacuation zone, an area that might need to be evacuated later, figure out today where you would go and how you would get there if emergency managers later this year tell you to evacuate. And here's a tip for the inland folks. If you don't live in one of these evacuation zones, maybe someone you care about does, and you could be their inland destination. Right. I, uh, uh, there's not a, you know, we run from the water and hide from the wind is the catchphrase we use on that. So most of the population around here doesn't have to evacuate. As Rick said, uh, why not open your house up to And then after you do your evacuation planning, then it's time to go visit your insurance agent, get the flood insurance, go shopping for supplies, and strengthening your home. Uh, any last thoughts on um, where things are headed with uh, what Flash is doing? Uh, we're going to read Leslie's blog later this week about how to strengthen your home. A lot of exciting things Flash and our partners are doing. Yeah, one of the benchmarks of Flash has been to, to work with the building professionals and, and study and come up with better ways to harden your house and protect it from hurricane uh, and other hazards, uh, tornadoes even. Uh, that's an area we still need a lot of work on. It, it, it takes constant pressure to keep the building code process moving forward. And we certainly need it here in the Houston-Galveston areas. Uh, the need for stronger codes when it comes to facing a hurricane, therefore making it safe. Uh, if you're out of the well, before we close out this particular Periscope podcast, we're all in the second world TV stage. In 2011, when I was with the media, I was traveling along with on the East Coast, and you were the director at the time, mm -hmm. and I was interviewing you. And then two years ago, we go to Ellington here in the yeah. Houston area, and then I'm the director, and he's in the media interviewing me. Uh, it, it's it's been so informative to me to work in different parts of the whole hurricane enterprise because we all have an important role to play. Mm -hmm. But what I've been telling people ultimately is, no matter how good the forecasts are, no matter how awesome the data from the aircraft are. No matter how ready the emergency managers are, none of that reaches its full potential unless individuals, families, business owners do what they need to do to get ready for the next hurricane. Yeah, and that's the, the final comment I usually make, and I'll make it now, is uh, uh, whatever you do, make a plan. Because if you are proactive upon the event of a hurricane because you have a plan, you'll fare much better, time is told, than if you're reactive as the storm is approaching. And here's what I've been saying to close this out. What does it really mean to be hurricane strong? We don't want to just hope a hurricane goes elsewhere this year and stop there. We need to be hurricane strong, we take steps in advance, we live through the event, and we recover in the aftermath. That's what Hurricane Strong is all about. Follow us, hashtag Hurricane Strong all week. We're headed to New Orleans tomorrow, then Mobile, Alabama, Naples, Florida on Friday. And I will see you, my friend, back here on Saturday yes, at the downtown exactly. Houston event. Awesome. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Ray.